Short promotional films have been around almost as long as film itself. You may have seen some on Mystery Science Theater 3000, or maybe at the Prelinger Archives. Here's a closer look at a few of them. Design for Dreaming Sponsored by General Motors, Design for Dreaming takes place at the 1956 Motorama at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. A dreaming, dancing woman visits the Motorama. And also gets a look at Frigidaire's Kitchen of Tomorrow with its plethora of time-saving devices. The couple was played by Thelma Tadlock and Mark Bro, two talented dancers and choreographers. The film was directed by William Bodine, a prolific actor and director, and the narrator is none other than Thurl Ravenscroft, also known as Tony the Tiger, the ghost host of Haunted Mansion, and the singer of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. Although it looks as if the dancers are at the Motorama, the film was actually shot on a soundstage in Miami, Florida. Once Upon a Honeymoon. This high quality film with a high quality cast and production crew was sponsored by Bell Telephone, although you'd be forgiven for thinking it was about kitchen appliances. In the short, a phone loving angel helps a frustrated musician write a song so that he can go on a much delayed honeymoon. The film was directed by Gower Champion, who went on to win several Tonys directing Hello Dolly and 42nd Street. The angel who steals the show was played by Chick Chandler, a versatile actor who appeared in over a hundred films and television shows. Chief, this is Wilbur. Mission accomplished. I'll be right up. Right. Out of this world. In this Jam Handy production, the forces of heaven and hell fight over the soul of a bread salesman. Well, sort of. He's my kind of a salesman, that boy. Down, down, down. Marvelous record. This sales training film was sponsored by the cellophane division of DuPont Chemicals in an effort to show the advantages of plastic wrapped pastries and breads while inspiring salesmen to work on their social skills while delivering baked goods to stores. While the identities of the angel and the salesman are still mysteries, the devilish figure known as Red in the short was played by character actor Ralph Clanton. Interestingly, Clanton went on to play a supermarket manager in 1971's They Might Be Giants. This is Hormel. This is Hormel does what it says on the tin. In this case, the tins of spam and other processed meats. In the short, two boys write to the Hormel factory in Austin, Minnesota, and are invited to go on a tour of the facility. Gentlemen, we would sure like to visit your plant. My dad said he would come with us if you would let us take a tour. Please let us know. Yours truly, Greg and Brad Rugg. This film was produced by Hormel's in-house audiovisual department and directed by Austin native Ferris Roy Fertney. You can still visit the Hormel factory today along with the historic Hormel family home. There's no information available on whether that waterfall of wieners is still around, however. Why not plan on visiting us soon? You're always welcome at Hormel, the home of fine food products. Mr. B. Natural. Perhaps the best known short these days is Mr. B. Natural, produced for the CG Con Company by Kling Film Productions. CG Con Limited, also known as Con Instruments, was located in Elkhart, Indiana, and was a major producer of musical instruments. The company still exists today as the Kahn and Selmer Company. Betty Luster, who played the Peter Pan-like Mr. B. Natural, was a dancer and variety show actress at the time. 
Bruce Podwell plays the young Buzz, who is inspired by Mr. B to take up the trumpet and find his calling in life. Bruce Podwell's nickname really was Buzz, and he grew up to become a professor of dance and theater at Tulane. Thanks, Mr. B. 